Everybody, welcome back to uh, episode five, I think we're on now, of season two. Yeah, we're breaking it up into seasons of uh, St. Joseph's Workshop. Uh, Jason and I are joining you tonight with my good friend, Christian Sweezy. Um, Sweezy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself instead of me rambling on I'd like to hear your bio from you because it's so interesting. Well, thank you, Slanky. Thank you all for having me. Uh, I was at the Washington Post for 20 years, or as I like to say, 100. 40 dog years and then uh, mostly in sports though to be honest and then as i tell people now instead of working for jeff bezos i work for the real god in that i work for ewtn i just had my fifth anniversary of working for ewtn i am the producer for news nightly with tracy sable and i love ewtn and i i, I learned a lot at wapo i will have, i do have to say and i still have some friends there um but it was an interesting place to try to keep my faith and i didn't always keep it but um certainly the rosary helped and when I did fall back in love with my faith, it was time to go somewhere else, frankly. So I've been at EW10 again for five years. I'm also the author of a book about lacrosse, which was given its name by Jesuit priests. That is my one and only tangential connection between Catholicism and lacrosse. Um, but it is <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we showed Baltimore, thank you, uh, the lacrosse revolution of the 1970s and Richie Moran's Big Red. There's actually a lot of Long Island on there. So Jason, uh, you might enjoy some of the Northport references. I think there are at least a couple. Um, that is available on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and Cornell Press. It came out in April. But other than that, you know, just trying to be a, a Catholic. And and you know, again, I go to mass four or five times a week, not because I'm holy, but because I'm not, and it really helps. And I try to pray a lot. And in fact, I just found a prayer, Father John Paul, who is our chaplain at EWTN for the um, bureau in D.C., gave us this amazing prayer. Uh, anytime we're feeling temptation. He said uh, the gist of it, I don't remember the full thing, but the gist of it essentially is in the name of Jesus Christ, leave me, go to the foot of his cross and await your punishment. Amen. That's what oh, we say. Man. To demons. It's yeah, so good. I, I, yeah. I heard something like that actually from uh, Father Glenn at, with the uh, the CFRs here in New York. There you go. I was, uh, I was talking to him once and uh, he gave me that same prayer. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's it was, amazing. And it's it's yeah. helped me Im immensely all, already. And the other yeah. thing, I'm reading Father Gabriel Amort's book. You know, he was one of the Vatican's mm -hmm. big exorcists and oh, yeah. one yeah. of his books. He's written several. But one of the ones, and he is very explicitly says the devil cannot read our minds. So God knows what we're thinking, but the devil does not. And that's a lie. And so mm -hmm. the devil sort of waits for our actions. And he is smart, unfortunately. He's, the R Russian Orthodox always say he is cunning but stupid. Uh, it's stupid in that, you know. <laughs> When he tempts us, we yeah. fall back in love with Christ because he always welcomes us back and forgives us. So, but anyway, right. um, the devil cannot read our minds. And so he just kind of reads our actions and reads our history and he knows our weaknesses. And so uh, I almost feel guilty saying that prayer because I'm like, wow, like this, whatever demon was just trying to tempt me is now in really deep, severe, <laughs> as we used to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, <laughs> so anyway, but so I, that's yeah. sort of the background. Well, and Father Glenn, uh, he he explained that prayer to me. He was like, you know, the devil and all of his minions, they're, they're legalists. So you have to be very specific. Yes. Like you can't just exactly. say like, leave me, go away. Cause they'll just come right back. So you gotta exactly. be like, go to the cross, stay there, await, await your, your punishment. punishment, you know, that kind of yep. thing. And it's like, then it, it kind of binds them to the cross. Exactly. And it's like, oh. <laughs> and and yeah. you know, Father Amorth said once too, during an exorcism that he asked the demon and the demons do have to tell the truth. It's sort of a, as you mentioned, a legal legalese or sort of a hierarchy because they were mm -hmm. fallen angels or were angels now fallen, right. that they do have to tell the truth when asked. You know, they don't necessarily tell it right away, but eventually if you ask them enough times, they do have to sit, tell the truth. And Father Amor said, how many demons are there? And the demon eventually answered him, so many that we could black out the sun if we wanted to. Wow, wow. That's... So they're around. Yes, Images yeah. of 300 there. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, right, right. Real fight in the shade. <laughs> yes, and and I think, you know, Christian, you bring up a, a, a good point. And, and uh, you know, the purpose of this episode, Drew and I were, were, were discussing this with our other um, contributors, Alan and Mark, who, who couldn't join us today. Um, as we get closer to the midterms and as we, you know, um, are going to head to the voting booth and we see – Basically, policies uh, that have been laid out by a particular, you know, particular politicians and um, their verbiage, their rhetoric. Um, you know, we wanted to have a show that kind of helps uh, our listeners or anybody out there to have a conscience when they go into the, the voting booth and really understand why they're voting. Yes, it's our it's our American right. Um, 
as, as much as they try to tamper with voting and, and create uh, shenanigans, as there's been many of um, stories or allegations or what have you about the U.S. election, um, which we're not going to get into today. Um, and so, you know, Andrew brought you on to kind of discuss that because of your political background in the news and, and, and what you do today. So um, could you share a little bit about what what it means to as a as a Catholic or, or you know, as a Christian voter, uh, what it means to have like a conscience or what the church kind of teaches us and, and how we should kind of use the church's teaching when when we vote? Sure. You know, last week I was listening to EW10 radio and the debate was, should we even vote at all? Like, should we just, you know, it, it was an interesting thing. And, and I think both people finally realized, yes, we do have to sort of take part in this social construct. Um, but, you know, even at WAPO, there were people, because we cover the news, there were people who would not vote in elections because they were technically covering those races or covering those candidates. And they thought, well, no, I, I think it's kind of inappropriate. For us, I would say it's very appropriate. Um, the danger I find in voting, and again, you know, not getting into candidates necessarily or even political parties, but on an issue like, uh, you know, say even abortion, voting for a pro-life candidate, I don't think is enough. And I think that's one of the traps that I tend to fall in, speaking for myself, like, oh, I voted for so-and-so, you know, because mm -hmm. I wanted to vote for life. Um, but that's, you know, how about saying a rosary in front of a Planned Parenthood? You know, that doesn't, you know, it, remember that whole argument back in the day about Twitter hashtags? And, oh, we did a Twitter hashtag oh, yeah. for girls in Nigeria who were abducted. And I think we just did our duty. Like, no, I, I don't think you did. And so, <laughs> you know, regardless <laughs> of, of the fully form conscience. And yes, I do think it is appropriate for us to vote because otherwise we're just sort of sitting ducks. Um, and that's not what we're called to be. We're called, to, what is it? Ed Condon at the pillar always said, Jesus said, love your enemies. He never said, don't have any. <laughs> so, you know, I think we are allowed <laughs> to sort of take a stand on, on issues, but I don't think that voting is enough. And especially on something that is important to the faith or, or religious freedom, you know, I think right. there's more to be done, but yes, just for this discussion, or at least for this part of the discussion. Um, it, and, and one of the things they said, last week when I was listening on the radio that I liked and they said, you know, vote for someone's record if it's an incumbent mm -hmm. in particular, because politicians lie or they embellish or they get an office and it becomes a little bit more complicated or they get an office and they intentionally obfuscate it and, and will vote completely different things. There are so many examples of politicians who say one thing and then go into office and do something completely different. So when right. possible, certainly vote on records instead of words. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. part of it. And, and also, you know, make sure that, that we're in good places. You know, Matthew Bunsen, our, the bureau chief in D.C., best advice I've ever gotten, he gave me in his office a few years ago. He said, stay close to the sacraments, stay close mm -hmm. to confession, stay close to the Eucharist. And I think as long as we do that, you know, our consciences can't, can't help but be fully formed as long as we're paying even a modicum of attention during mass or doing a little bit of prayer time on our own or praying the rosary every day. Um, you know, I remember leading up to the 2016 election, Father John Ricardo with a wonderful Crisis Answer podcast out of Michigan. And he was saying a rosary, I think it was once a week. I think it was Wednesday nights they were doing a rosary leading up to the election. Again, not for a particular candidate, not for Hillary Clinton or President Trump, just sort of that, you know, the life would win or, you know, whomever, like whomever God wanted to win would win. And by the mm -hmm. end of that, they were having 5,000 people at those rosaries. And so I think the wow. little you know, <laughs> initiatives like that, yeah, it was pretty amazing. You know, it just started at his one parish outside of Detroit and all of a sudden it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And mm -hmm. I, sort, I always like that example. But I, the bottom line is that, you know, voting a conscience and, and being unafraid too. You know, he, he, I'm in DC, like there aren't that many people who are probably gonna vote the way I possibly will, but that doesn't mean I should be afraid of that. And and was it, yeah, like, right. Blessed Mother Teresa, or St. Mother Teresa now, who always said, um, they'll know we're Christians by our smile, you know, and so just don't be scared. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. stuff like that is, uh, is the advice I would give. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, especially for right now, I mean, fear, there's a lot of fear, I think, on the right, because uh, we've seen just kind of, we've seen the right be victimized, frankly, by, mm -hmm. you know, government, tech, whatever. And so I think, you know, step forward in boldness and, and, do what we think is right and well, I, yeah, yeah so it, i'm sorry andrew so i don't mean to cut you but look at the um it was it the face act like you can't even do a rosary in front of a you know planned parenthood uh there's people in jail there's over 26 people currently mm -hmm. in the past 
several months that have been prosecuted for saying a rosary hmm. at a Planned Parenthood, yeah. but yet you have other folks who who are blowing up like pregnancy crisis centers because they right, are more yeah. pro pro life. Um, well, Mark Houck was just his house was just raided by the feds because he was praying outside the praying the rosary outside of yeah, right and 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 you know just I. I I don't understand if one person's breaking the law and the other person is, I would say, just praying peacefully. And you could call it maybe protesting in a way, right? Um, that in in today's governmental society, that one is persecuted to, to prison and the other one is like, oh, just go do it again. Um, you know, Christian, what do you, what would you say to um to that, because I, I, I think what I've been hearing as I talk to a few few people that are, are moderates and some were, you know, who do I vote in the previous election? Who do I vote for? You know, I know uh, President Trump, his mouth kind of ticked people mm-hmm. off, and, and I understand that. And um, But he got things done, and he got things done for the American people, and, and uh, the country was in a lot better shape than it is today in, in a lot of regards. Um, so how does, what, what is being a Christian and voting? Like, I, I guess maybe not being emotional about it. And, and again, I think you were alluding to praying and all of that. Um, what, what do you, what's the best advice you could give to say a moderate, somebody who, or an independent who, um, may see both sides of the fence, but doesn't, doesn't know where to go as a um, as maybe a Catholic or a Christian, um, and and where what, how to make the right decision on the, in the voting booth. And this is one of the things, Jason, about the it's called the Johnson Amendment, where you know you're not really allowed to endorse somebody from the pulpit, and that's what makes it kind of interesting for us because you know we're not gonna, but but in a way that's good too because I don't think we need to vote as sheep. You know, I don't think we need to be told what to do. I think we can figure it out for ourselves. You know, I do think knowing what church teaching is and what it isn't. um, And I think being courageous enough, you know, even going back to your point about Mark Houck and Slanky's point about Mark Houck, you know, what worries me so much about that is how are they finding these people? You know, they weren't arrested locally, local, local authorities had nothing to do with, you know, no charges pressed, no nothing. And yet 18 months later, they're being raided by the FBI. I'm coming and it sounds like the DOJ and FBI, just reading between the lines of what Peter Breen said, one of the attorneys, he's representing Hauk and he's representing one of the people in Tennessee um, who was also rousted by the FBI, one of the 11 who was arrested recently. And Peter Breen intimated that the DOJ and FBI are going to the abortion clinic saying, hey, who's been bothering you recently? And that's how they're getting the names. Oh, and no so way. Okay. that's what it sounded like to me. But I mean, how else would they be getting the names? You know, they weren't arrested locally. It, these stories were not stories until the FBI started to get involved. So that part I think is scary. But there's also, you know, we have a guest on our show often named Jason Jones, host of the Jason Jones show down in um, mm. uh, Bronfels, New Bronfels, outside near San Antonio, I think, in Texas. And he does so much work, you know, in, in I love that guy. Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah, he's amazing. He, he's really on the front lines of, of doing things and trying to save people. And, and he, he saved so many families in Afghanistan, Jason, people who contacted him and, you know, he would extract them. He has a lot of contacts in the military and sort of retired military, uh, a lot of special forces guys um, who he's able to tap and they're able to, to save a lot of those families. But Jason was saying he and another guy were in a very tricky predicament in Afghanistan, I want to say. And they were, I think at gunpoint brought this, one of the Taliban leaders and Jason was a little freaked out. And the guy next to him said, no, no, no. If we die, we die for Christ. Like, this is our big opportunity. This is our big moment. And, you know, they might have living. Spoiler alert. Book, a lot of mm-hmm. But, you know, that sort of fearlessness, it, um, even going back to Mother Teresa, you know, in that she had somebody in her, uh, someone approached her at the orphanage and said, oh, you know, we need help. And so she went to a businessman and said, hey, you know, do you have a donation? And the businessman spit on her. And she said, well, yeah. thank you for that. Do you have anything for the orphanage you know and, and yeah. so i mean you know it's just i mean i don't know if i'm answering the question i'm again i don't want to be a lamb taken to slaughter but i think it's pretty obvious to know especially in this day and age what's demonic and what isn't i think it's pretty obvious mm-hmm. to know 
where the church is and isn't. And, and even people who are unhappy with Pope Francis, you know, I, at EWTN, I read or listen to, and I don't speak Italian for the record, but I, I get the gist of what he says. And I would, like 90 plus percent of what he says is completely orthodox and true. So even if, you know, he's very pro-life, he's very pro-traditional marriage. And so even people who are worried about Pope Francis, I think if you've followed even just what Pope Francis says the vast majority of the time, I think you would have a pretty well-formed conscience. Mm. Uh, so, okay, so um, uh, the catechism, like that, for, for our listeners out there, we're kind of, our hope is that coming, if you, you know, you make it through the whole episode, you kind of come away with like maybe a game plan to ensure that your conscience is as well formed as it can possibly be if you intend to head into the voting booth. Uh, yeah, in a this isn't weeks. a persuasion. This isn't, this yeah. is a, you know, right. when you go to confession, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, um, which we call of your consciousness. And right. just when you, when you go into confession, you're, you're, you're evaluating your consciousness. What we're, we're, we're advising here is do the same thing when you, when you vote, what's, what's mm-hmm. the conscious, you know, what's the, the, the moral and conscious thing to do. And, and I think, uh, you know, that's that's really the goal of this conversation. Uh, by no means are we trying to persuade anybody to vote in a particular manner. Um, I think I think our faith and our church kind of helps us which way to go. But Christian, I think right. you alluded to your earlier point, you know, see their record because, yeah. you know, there may mm-hmm. be a particular candidate who falls in the line of what the church would kind of lean towards. And then they're the complete, they go in and then they're complete, you know. Well, I, I think especially oh. since 2020, there's there's been some blurred lines, especially yes. for us Catholics, because two of the three top most powerful people in this country right now, com, you know, they profess to be Catholics, right. but they stand for things that are very much in black and white print in the catechism of the church and elsewhere in, you know, papal encyclicals and, and other documents you know, the, the, these are moral issues that the church is emphatically wholly against. And yet they're standing up there saying, like, I can be both. I, I'm a Catholic, but I can also say that I'm, you know, OK with abortion or something like that. So they, 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 they support death, as, as we see with the bail reform laws and, and the murders mm-hmm. that are going on and then obviously abortion. So, you know, mm-hmm. they, they are they are not following the the. Uh, commandment of uh, thou shall not kill now they're not physically right. doing it but they're permitting it and they're right. not doing anything yeah stop. they're kind of guilt by association and, or uh right. you know what, what we, we read, call that like in the catechism uh you know we read that the even um supporting it and giving avenues to abortion is mm-hmm. you should be excommunicated as, well as that's public. um yeah i think that qualifies as remote cooperation right sin you know, Correct. now our now the catechism says for, you know, those of us who or those of you out there who want to reference, I'm borrowing from paragraph 1783, the second half, the sec, or the, the second, I should say third sentence says um, the education of conscience is indispensable for human beings who are subjected to negative influences and tempted by sin to prefer their own judgment and to reject authoritative teachings. So. For those, for those of us, for those of you out there who, you know, whatever your opinions on certain political hot button issues might be, we're just saying be informed on what right. the church actually teaches. Don't listen to, you know, people who are in positions of authority, but they're not in positions of authority in the church to tell you what the church believes and teaches, because they could still be standing opposed to that. So, the the catech, I mean, I just pulled the catechism up on my computer in, in five seconds flat. You all can do that. It's very accessible. You can find out in less than a minute what the church factually says without any equivocation, without any um, exception about all of these issues that, you know, we're going to the polls for year after year. And it's important, I think, for a lot of Catholics out there, they're a little misguided, either because they're not informed or they're ill-informed on, you know, not just whether the church church has anything to say at all about these things, but if it does have something to say, they're kind of like, well, that's that's 
flexible. That's there's breathing room around right. that issue or something. And then maybe they're not. There isn't, you know. So or or, or this um, is how my parents always voted, or this is how you know right. we were we you know we we were strong you know union or you know and a particular party is was at a time very big with the unions they still are look at the teacher unions we don't need to get into that mm-hmm. it's another pod that's another episode yeah. another time hmm. but <laughs> again you know um it's it's not they're not what your parents uh believed in and voted for so many years ago um no and unfortunately yeah. there's not many left in the in the house or the senate or obviously in the white house unfortunately and and uh so keep that in mind too you know just because our parents did something it was a different time then and it was a different um different values by by these um these candidates um and and that's also important because i i feel Mm -hmm. especially young adults get caught up uh in in that well that's what my parents always voted for so i must vote for them too or you know um and and at a time it probably made sense it probably made sense and they were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing for the middle class families and 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 um keeping the family you know narrative together um but again make your own decision on that and and see which candidate uh to Christian's point, looks at uh, look at the record and see how they've done policies to support all families. This is very mm-hmm. important. All families, because yeah. all families should have a nucleus of a mother and a father. Um, and there's definitely been uh, demographics that they have destroyed purposely and removed the father purposely out of the equation. And we've seen many of unfortunate scenarios and uh, because of that, and again, do your background, do your history, do the look up the records of these candidates to see what policies they created to either keep the nucleus of the family, which is another thing our church teaches, or to remove the nucleus of the family. See, the best Chris, example I could give, you know, is the Reagan commercial. I think it was in eighty or eighty four. That you know, it's what is it? It was more. It's morning again in America. Or, you know, it was this very hopeful kind oh, of one yeah. minute spot. And it was part of the commercial actually showed a church. I think it may have been a wedding or a church was definitely like a, a good part of that one minute commercial. Um, and people looked at that and said, oh, you know, that's hope for the economy and that's hope for, for the country. And I would say for Catholics to sort of not use that lens of the economy or whatever it is, but maybe switch a little bit like, okay. And it gets a little bit tricky because frankly, you know, some of the church teaching and some of the Catholic leaders, bishops are very pro you know, I think immigration is a little bit of a gray area because mm-hmm. people have opinions of it. And there are church leaders who are very pro immigration. And, you know, I, and again, so I think it's kind of yes, in the uh, case uh, when there's two right answers, just go with the one that's, that's maybe more right. I, yeah, you know, yeah, it, it, it's a little bit of gray area there. It's interesting. Yeah. And it's an interesting topic that you bring up, Christian. But let's um, let's let's discuss that a little bit. So that's a good I think that you bring up a good. good so. We, we are all here to support our brothers and sisters, right? To collectively, we are a family. We're, we're all brothers and sisters and we're children of God, correct? So, right, we can start there. And that's a good baseline to start with. Um, immigration is great. You know, I think all of us on this call and all our listeners have come from immigrants at some point. Okay, I'm not Native American. I know I don't believe any of you are Native American. No. So we are not natives to the United no. States, right? So we're all immigrants. Um, but what's what the policy that is kind of, you know, uh, has been created is sex trafficking, especially minors. I mean, it's atrocious. The Catholic daughters down on the border have saved tons. And you can look this up tons and tons of children from sex trafficking. The uh, drug situation is, is just they're just killing kids with the fentanyl, putting it in you know, God stopper boxes and nerd boxes and whatever candies you can think of. Uh, so, so, you know, that's not really an, an immigration policy that I think our church, and I, and again, I'm not speaking for our church, I'm not Pope Francis, but that's probably not the part of the immigration process that they're, they're condoning. Um, I think they're, they're against that, obviously. Um, so again, back to Christian's point is, 
see what the record is of some of these candidates on immigration. We are a nation of immigrants, and it's what makes this country so great. And what's the policies of when you're going into to the booth and looking at the candidate, right, left, independent, whatever the candidate is, what is their stance on immigration? Is it legal immigration? Is it a pathway that's a lot easier than all the bureaucracy that it is today uh, when people are legally trying to come here? Or is it, you know, bring your children and we'll fly them all over the place and God knows who they come with, go with. And you have to pray. And I just would like to take a moment, pray for, pray for all of that going on. Do rosaries, you know, in your rosary, do, your, do an intention, put an intention in there for our blessed mother to put some sanity into this and protect these children who are, 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 are just, um, I've actually seen it. Me and my wife were coming back from our honeymoon and there was a, a young, uh, had to be an early teen. Um, and she had no idea where she was going. She was on the plane. It was just so captain obvious and it was, it was heartbreaking. It was depressing. And who knows where she went? Who knows who who knows who picked her up? And, and I prayed, you know, a little prayer that, you know, maybe I, I feel guilty that I didn't do a little bit more, honestly. But I did say, God, you know, and St. Joseph, come and, you know, give her travel where she goes and finds maybe a, a, a good home, what uh, just a good home and not somebody who's trying to put her to work in, in, in inappropriate ways. Um, so it, it exists. And don't let them tell you that it doesn't. So, again, you know, think about it. Do some research on the candidates before you go into that booth on November 8th. And 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 think about what the conscience of the church uh, tells us to do. And, and I'm sure you're going to make make a right, right decision. And that's the good thing, Jason, about the, the Johnson Amendment is that, you know, we're not going to vote as a block. We're not being told what to do and we're not cheap. You know, there is a lot of leeway for us to figure this out on for ourselves because that's how you learn you learn by right. you know i'm not unless there's a coach who's going to tell me what to do like but this isn't sports this is life and so I, I i appreciate that there is some room for us to kind of figure this stuff out for ourselves absolutely Swedes, would you say you have any are there any resources that you ever lean on for um to inform yourself before you know filling out a ballot as a catholic i, I think there's a catholic voters guide right there is a Catholic Voters Guide. I, you know, obviously, I, I do think, and yes, you and I both work there, but I do think EWTN, the National Catholic Register, mm -hmm. Catholic News Agency, I think they do a pretty good job covering the issues. And I think that they come at it from almost an explicitly Catholic perspective. And so I think that would help. And, and certainly, um, a lot of the faith leaders or people you know, might happen to agree with or, or, or people, you know, obviously these people pray a lot. And so yeah. you know, if they're going to tell you one thing or the other, it, it's something to, to listen to. But again, I don't think that they endorse specific candidates. I think they talk more issues. And, and even, yeah. right. you, you know, there was a right before, I think it was a 2016 election and I was at mass in West Virginia, a little cottage in Hedgesville, West Virginia. And the priest was saying, you know, kind of a you know lefty priest, to be honest with you, I think it was a Jesuit. And at the very end of mass, he just said, vote life. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, just vote life. <laughs> and uh, okay, yeah. thanks. You know, that was <laughs> easy and, enough. And, you know, and that's, good, that's good advice because- I thought it was too. Vote. And I remember, still remember it. It was six years ago. I still remember it. And, mm. and life, people get this, people get this, this confused too. Like life, everybody goes right now because abortion is a hot topic. They go, right, well, life is like, oh, you're, 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 you know, you want to get rid of abortion. No, life is providing- for your family. Life mm -hmm. is not not living paycheck to paycheck and destitute. Life life is is able to go and have a good time and be and have a family and a nucleus. That's life. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what life is about. So that's great advice because it's not just abortion. No. It's mm -hmm. it's it's having hope to be able to succeed to be able to make choices. We have God has given us free will and, and God is God. Government is not God. I know, hmm. again, they try to change change the, the you know, the, that G, they, they think that means God and they, <laughs> you know, and take government after it. And that yeah. could go for both sides. So let's also make yeah. sure, you know, very clear on that. Mm -hmm. And, but, but life is not just about bearing a child and in, in, in the womb and all of that. Life is, is about being, you know, respectful to your neighbor, 
helping your neighbor and when they're in need, coming together as a community and celebrating the community. And, you know, if, if, if Drew has a, you know, if there's a problem and Drew's like, hey, Jason, I need you and da, 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 and he gives me a call. And, and obviously if I'm a, you know I'm available, sure, what's up? What do you need? You know, oh, we're both sick. Could you make me some chicken soup? Absolutely. I'll make you some chicken mm. soup. That's <laughs> life. No, but this, that, that's life. It's not You're just right, about yeah. abortion. That's right. Life, no, no, absolutely. That's what we're called to do as, as Christians. And one of the things, too, J- Jason, and that, that makes this election unique and probably 2024 unique as well, is the whole coronavirus. And, you know, well, hmm, I wonder which people who are currently in office shut down churches. And, and you know, that's another thing. It, again, it's not just abortion. And, and frankly, it's not just the border one way or the other. But, hey, who shut down churches? Who left churches open? You know, he, I'm here in D.C. Right. And even, you know, Cardinal Gregory, I think, filed a lawsuit or threatened to file a lawsuit against the mayor to have churches reopen. They'd been closed for several weeks and mm-hmm. they wind up opening. I don't think he ever actually, actually had to file a lawsuit. I think Mayor Bowser opened it. But that's, you know, like hmm, in, in California, Governor Newsom, I think they went to the Supreme Court to reopen churches in California yeah. and other jurisdictions like that. So, you know, pay attention to that. Again, it isn't just this one issue or there's two issues. I mean, there's a lot going on here. And trust me, if, if churches were closed before, nothing to stop them from right. being closed and, again. And listen, right. all, ch- all churches, temples, Mosque, right, exactly. You know, exactly. Religion, yeah, I didn't say Catholic it, Church, right? Exactly. Right. Good point. Any any religion institution that obviously is is teaching, uh, you know, respect and you know, needs needs to be open and 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 should be open because when you when you eliminate hope, that's what communism does. It tries to eliminate hope and gets rid of the higher power and eliminates right. The hope. state, and everything is the state. Right. The state is everything. Everything, and everything is, the is the state. state. Right. Yep. And when you eliminate hope which is which is god because god is is absolute hope and absolute life when you eliminate that then you have nothing and then you have then you then you have nothing to live for and right. also another thing that i think i would recommend and Kristen, you know since you're the expert here you know talk to talk to somebody from eastern europe old eastern europe so union eastern europe Ask them a couple questions. Yeah. Ask them why they immigrated to the United States. I was about to say, as a nation of immigrants, you can find some people. You my mom is Russian people. Orthodox. And even, you know, last Friday, Jason, it's funny you bring that up. Last Friday, one of my mom's Russian Orthodox friends, who's a priest, went to Columbia. It's brilliant. Two, two degrees from Columbia University in um, Harlem. And he, we were talking about something and he was saying, oh, you know, my, remember, Orthodox priests are allowed to be married. Not all of them are married, but they are allowed to be married. So he was saying his wife's father you know was almost killed and in, in, in the 30s or whatever and then he was put into a concentration camp for being christian and being a orthodox priest and i said oh by the nazis and he said no the communists this was 1936 like the communists right. had concentration camps long before the nazis ever dreamed of it right right so which yeah, i either are, didn't know or had forgotten but yeah, yeah or was in, it wasn't taught or it wasn't taught yeah it's not something you hear about another, you right know, exactly which is, which is another episode <laughs> For another time, yeah. we're, we're really bringing in new episodes here on this conversation. Yeah. But, but you know, and, and, and yeah, and, and and that's these are all things, folks. These are all things that we wanted to discuss to, again to have that conscience of what the church teaches, and to have that 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 awareness, and going into the voting booth because it is important. Because if we don't do it right, and we make the wrong choice by not educating ourselves and not, you know, praying about it. Do a rosary before you go on November mm-hmm. and see what, what compels you where to, where, how to vote. Well, well, you know, do do that. That's a good good idea. Is pray the rosary and say, you know, ask, ask our Blessed Mother to guide guide us in, in this election. Um, because she's, that's what, she talked about the rosary. She gave us the rosary. During uh, Fatima and, and communism, mm-hmm. talking about communism, okay. So, and and um, the destruction of it, okay. So, you know, we could call on our Blessed Mother to help us in in the voting booth. Obviously, please don't do the rosary in the voting booth. I'm pretty sure most <laughs> people get because people have things to do. But before you go, I would advise that'd be a, a good thing to do to get your conscience um, opened and cleaned and and uh, open to what God. Um, would like you to do his will to 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 make the right selection um, because it is it is important. It isn't just hey I, I voted today and I get a sticker and I post on Facebook and Instagram that I voted today. Hmm. 
The choices we make on November 8th and any election, even local, by the way, even when they're like, oh, primaries for sheriff, go and vote. Because let me tell you something. Though all of this stuff determines how we live as a society and as a country. And right now, I don't have to say anything. I think you could, mm. you heard me pause. Right now, you look outside your window and look at society and look at what's going on and ask yourself, is that something that you want to live in continuously? Mm. And that's another good thing I think about looking at the conscience of, of voting. Mm -hmm. um, and do the research. Don't just listen to one channel. Because one channel could be saying all one thing and another channel could be listen to both. Mm. Before you go on the aid and, and really, really think about what what's at stake. Yeah. Um, because it is important. It is important. Um, I think especially yeah. for the church, because as you alluded to, Christian. They shut it down once. Yeah. It doesn't mean they won't do it again or try to do it again. No. I've seen some whispers that it might have just been a beta test. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. Well, with all that, I think we can wrap it up here. And Sweeze, I mean, do you want to you have any parting shots you want to leave with us before we call it a day? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I did like the, the priest who said vote life, you know, at the end of the day, vote life. Mm -hmm. um, but and also I think Jason kind of piggybacking on what you were saying, you know, this voting is sort of the beginning and it's not the end one way or the other, you know, regardless of how this goes, you know, we're still called to to be good people to the other side, if you will. And maybe I see it more because I'm in DC and so there's a lot more of that talk, you see a lot more um people. But I am kind of struck, you know, I, I go to mass sometimes at St. Joe's on Capitol Hill where um Senator Kennedy, then Senator Kennedy went before he became president. John F. Kennedy, um, Catholic president. And so, and it's funny because I see that if I go to the 8 a.m. mass, and again, I go to mass not because I'm holy, but because I'm not, and I need the mm -hmm. help, and the help is there for the record. And so yeah. when I go to the 8 a.m. mass and I see those staffers on Capitol Hill, I can almost always figure which or which party. It, it just, again, you know, they'll know we're Christians by our smile. Uh, and, yeah. you know, he, I even saw a video today of Alex Stein, whom I find highly amusing at Penn State, and people were so mad at him. and. <laughs> One lady follow him spit on, on him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. The lady who spit on him was good. For the record. Anyway, <laughs> I'll move on. But, the, but my, you know, and he was just kind of smiling and laughing. And, and I mean, I think that's a nice way to be, you know, because we have God. Like, what, are, what, what mm -hmm. am I scared of? And that's one of Father Amor Amor's things, too. Like, um, the, yes, the devil exists, but there's help for mm -hmm. us. And in a way, it's good he exists because it brings us closer to God. And, and it's a nice reminder, you know, they always say the greatest trick the devil pulled was to make people think he doesn't exist. Well, as Catholics and Christians and other religions, we know he exists. We know for a fact he exists. And and I think it's mm -hmm. always, you know, there's always a call to holiness one way or the other. And I think that it, as long as we embrace that, and, and I think one of you said earlier, you know, I, mean, I think Jason was you who said, you know, well, we're all God's children, you know, and we technically are. I mean, every single one person on, who's going to vote the other way for me and being a WAPO, I got to see it firsthand. Like, they're all our brothers and sisters. And, and and at WAPO, you know, politically, I was probably a little bit different from most of them, but I was still, a lot of them were friends of mine, you know, and it, whatever it is, what it is. And I'm not any great human humanist. I'm not any great person. We I just break bread with each other. We don't have to be at right, each exactly. We, we have a lot more in common than we right. than not in common. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And the communist thing, those, I have issues with that, but that's for another podcast if you all were having that comment. <laughs> we actually, yeah. if you want, check it out. We had uh, Father Chet on, he actually was from Hungary, uh, and he survived uh, Marx, um, communism in Hungary, and he's actually a priest at my grandpa uh, grandparents' church in Port Jervis. So if you want to check that out, anybody else wants to check that out again, is another good um, one of our episodes that uh, I, would, oh, nice. I wouldn't say political episode. But uh, Christian, definitely check that out, and and anybody yeah, else, you. our listeners, to check that out. Uh, it, was, it was season one, um, so you might have to scroll down a little bit. Um, mm. But again, that's a good. Um, so uh, hopefully there was some insight there, Christian, for you. And uh, if there's some further conversation you'd like to have with that, you know, let us know, and maybe we could set up. Um, yeah, we definitely want to have you back on. Like, yeah, I would love to do it. Thank you guys for having okay. me. I would love to come back. Yes, absolutely. I think there's some. Uh, 
some future shows that already in our discussion tonight. So we can, <laughs> we can work yes. that out. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Well, with that, I'll just say, um, thanks everybody for tuning in and, uh, we're going to catch you next time. And we'll just close by saying St. Joseph, pray for us. Yeah.